Number one tells us the number of people with the flu during an epidemic is a function F of the number of days since that epidemic began. The equation here defines F. How many people had the flu at the beginning of this epidemic? And so we know that there's a couple ways to do this. One is if it's at the beginning is to just plug in zero for your variable. That would be the initial value. Um, the other is if you look at the equation, because when we put zero in here, this whole section right here will be one. And so that's just going to leave this first number here as our um, initial value. So 50 people is our initial amount of people or however many, how many people had the flu at the beginning of this. So how quickly is um, the flu spreading and how can we tell from the equation? So that's by using this growth factor. So the growth factor in here would be how fast this flu is spreading. So you can say it's spreading by 1.5 or three halves. Um, by a factor of three halves. So I'm just going to put or 1.5 in parentheses if you decided to divide that out. So what does F of 1 mean in this situation? So remember F is the number of people who have the flu and then the, the um, number inside is the days. So this represents um, how many people are infected one day after the flu or after this epidemic began. And then does 3.5 make sense in this situation? So what this is trying to ask us is, does three and a half make sense for the number of days? Okay, so can this be a number um, of days? And yeah, right, it can. So that's just halfway through the fourth day. So that's just meaning like at noon. So yes, this would be... noon on the fourth day or like, you know, on that fourth day. So three days have passed. So we're just halfway through the fourth day or at noon. Number two, the function F gives the dollar value of a bond. So this is something that you put in the bank. You can, you can buy this. Um, and then they'll give you more money back a certain number of years after it was purchased. The graph of F is shown. So what is F of zero? So remember, that's where we look on this vertical axis. And so F of zero here is 1,000. And this would be the initial cost. Or how much you purchased. Maybe I'll say that. How much you purchased the bond for or the purchase price. So you bought the bond for $1,000. And then what is F of 4.5? So we can go look here, right in between 4 and 5, and then go over. So that's about right here. And it looks like these are counting by 100s. So this would be like about 1250 or 1250 And this is the value of the bond after four and a half years. So it's grown $250 um, in that four and a half years. And then when is F of T equal to 1500? So then we'll go ahead and look over here at 1500 and we'll go over and see where it hits the graph and then go down. So this is you know somewhere just after eight years. So maybe like 8.25. Um, and this would be 
the time or the number of years it would take for the bond for the value of the bond to be fifteen hundred dollars so the number of years until the bond is worth fifteen hundred dollars Number three, a function gives the number of stray cats in a town T years since the town started an animal control program. So we're looking at stray cats um, and then T years since it started this program. The program includes um, both sterilizing stray cats and then finding homes that will adopt them, trying to reduce the number of stray cats that are there. An equation representing F is given to us right here. What is the value f of t when t is zero? So again, this is that initial value. You can plug zero in here or recognize that it's just gonna be this 243. And this would be the amount of stray cats when the program started. What's an approximate value of f of t when t equals one half? So then you're going to want to go ahead and plug one half in um, for t or 0.5 is probably easier in your calculator just to make sure that you don't um, have anything weird happen when you put a fraction up there. Um, but if we um, plug that in, we're going to get about 140. And so then this means... Um, you know, six months in because T is in years. So half of a year, um, there's 140 cats. So after half a year, there are 140 stray cats. So the number has been reduced from 243 to 140 after um, half of a year. And then what does the number one third tell us? So what's this one third in the equation tell us? And that's the growth factor. So in this case, you know, the growth factor is decreasing, right? So this tells us that each year there are one third less cats, less stray cats. So the number of stray, stray cats is reduced by one third each year. Then it says use technology to graph F for the values between zero and four. Um, and what graphing window allows you to see that? So I went ahead and graphed this on Desmos. And we knew that the initial value here was 243. So we definitely um, needed to have our Y values higher than 243. So I chose um, Y values between, and I like to have a little bit at the bottom of the graph here. So I don't want it to just be at zero. So I chose to graph between negative 25 and 250 for the Ys. So I could get a little bit below that axis just so I can see it better. Um, so let me kind of, let me highlight this axis. So right, like these two axes, I like to be a little um, below and to the left of each one. So I picked negative 25 to 250. And then for the X values, again, I went a little bit to the left. So I did negative 0.5. Um, and then I went up to like 4.5. So that showed me everything from zero to four. Number four, function G gives the amount of chemical in a person's body in milligrams T hours since the patient took the drug. The equation G of T equals this defines the function. What does the fraction three-fifths mean in this situation? So it means each hour, three-fifths of the chemical remains.
or each each hour the chemical is the chemical that remains is reduced by three fifths. So kind of however you want to say that. Then this one asks us to just sketch a graph of G. So you don't have to use graphing um, technology. You just need to sketch it. And so I just um, I know it needs to get to 600. So I just did three or six dashes here and counted this as 600. And I also um, went ahead and calculated, you know, what is it at at zero? It's at 600. I plugged in one and got 360, two got 216, um, plugged in three and I got um, like 129. Plugged in four, got about 78. Plugged in five, got about 47. Six, got 28. Seven, um, got about 17. And just to give me an idea of kind of what this curve is gonna look like. So then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'll just label this one as five so we know what my scale is. So at zero, it was at 600. At one, it's at like 360. Two, it was at 216. Three, it was at 129. Four was at 78. Five is at 47. Six is at 28, seven. So then you can see it's getting closer and closer to that bottom axis. But so that's kind of how I just sketch. Then it wants to know what's the domain and what's the range. So domain is the inputs, right? And the domain in this case is the time. And so we know that the time a chemical can be in the body is anywhere um, more than or equal to zero hours. So our time is um, greater than or equal to zero, or you could say all non negative values, if you'd rather say it that way. So all non-negative numbers. So the chemical can be in there for zero hours, one, two, three, three and a half, 3.7, 482 hours, whatever um, that is. Then the range, okay, is this, you know, this output here, which is the chemical. So the range is the amount of chemical that's in the body and then it's measured in milligrams, right? So the chemical that remains in milligrams. And we know that the max amount of that is 600 because that was the initial value that's in there. So we know that this range um, is gonna be less than or equal to 600. Um, and really like it's not gonna go negative. So you could say, um, I could actually add in a lower boundary for this. So I could say the numbers are going to be between 0 and 600. So you could you could say that differently, right? You could say anything. You, you know, we said all negative numbers here. You could say all positive values below 600 if you wanted. So we could just say 600 and below. So if you like it in words, you can do that. Or if you like it in mathematical symbols, you could do this. Number five, the dollar value of a moped is a function of the number of years since the moped was purchased. The function is defined by this equation. What's the best choice for the domain? And so our domain in this case is the years, okay? Since the purchase of that moped. So we're not going to have A or B as options because we're not going to be looking at negative years for this moped. So it's just going to be the initial value of it when we purchase it and then as we move forward for one, two, three years. So then we need to decide, does it make more sense for our upper limit to be 10 years or 100 years? Well, a moped does not last for that long. So it doesn't really make sense if we have a moped for a hundred years, that isn't going to happen. Okay. That's not the, the moped. I mean, I guess you could argue that maybe it'll become an antique at some point and then it might be valued at, at something. Um, but the most likely case would be that our domain is going to be 
um, zero to 10, because this equation, even if it becomes an antique, does not then continue to represent the value of this moped. It's going to basically go down to zero. And then if you happen to keep it in pristine shape and kept it, then maybe it would start to appreciate in value and start going back up, in which case this function wouldn't represent it anymore. Number six, a patient receives a thousand milligrams of medication. Each hour, one fifth of the medicine in the patient's body decays. And what this means is that if one fifth is decaying, then four fifths remains. And that's what we need for our equation or for what's left in the body is four fifths, okay? Because one plus four is five. So if one fifth is decaying, then four fifths is remaining in the body. So complete the table with the amount of medicine in the patient's body. So if we're at a thousand to start, okay, then we would multiply by four fifths to get 800 or plug in, uh, well, you don't have an equation yet, so you're gonna write the equation in a minute. Um, but so multiply by four fifths, multiply by four fifths again, okay? And then multiply by four fifths again, and you'll get all of these values. Okay, so timesing by the value that remains will get us that next one. So then we know when we write the equation, then we would take our initial value of 1,000. We would multiply by the growth factor or what remains in the body, which in this case is four-fifths. And we would do that as many times as we need to for each hour. So then that's our equation here. So M of H is going to equal 1,000 times four-fifths um, to the H power. Then it wants us to plug um, 10 in for H into our equation to figure out how much remains after 10 hours. And if we do that, we end up with about 107 milligrams remaining. Number seven, the trees in a forest are suffering from a disease. The population of trees, which we'll call P, is in thousands. It's modeled by this equation, where T is the number of years since 2000. So what was the population in 2001? So this means that it's been one year. And so we'll plug one into this equation. And we get that P of one, or the population after um, one year is 67.5 thousand, because remember it's measured in thousands. So if we were to write this out as an actual number, not like that decimal, it'd be 67,500 if you wanted to write it out fully. Then this next one asks us in 1999, which is one year before 2000. So this is going to be T equals negative one. So now we're looking at the population one year before there was this disease. Um, and when you plug that in, you get 120. And then remember that this is 120,000. So if we wanted to write it out as a number, that would look like 120,000 like that. Then it asks us, what does the three-fourths represent in the equation? And so this is, um, you know, the growth factor. So it's saying that three-fourths of the trees remain after each year. Or each year, three-fourths of, three of the trees, you know, remain or, or are not diseased, right? So we have three-fourths of the trees that remain each year. What's the last year when the population was more than 250,000? So now you're plugging in um, negative numbers into this, right? So we have the initial population of trees was 90,000. And then we plugged in negative one and we got 120,000. So then we'll plug in negative two, two years before this started and see that it was about 160. 
negative three um, gives us 213 approximately, and then negative four gives us 284. And so this is the last year before the population dropped below 250, because the third year before it was at 213. So T equals negative four is four years um, before 2000. And so four years before 2000 is 1996, is approximately, you know, with this model, the last time that the tree population was higher than 250,000. Number eight, all of the students in a classroom list their birthdays. Is the birth date a function of the student? Meaning, can we plug in a student and get back a specific birthday? And this is true. So yes, each student has a specific birthday. and A being one specific birth date. So if you call on a student, they will give you a, a birth date, not multiple birthdays, one. Um, versus if is the student a function of the birth date? So can we just like give a birth date and it gives one student back? Sometimes because you don't have a lot of kids in class, um, but not necessarily, right? So a birth date, so no, um, because a birthday could represent multiple students. So we could theoretically say, you know, who has a birthday on, you know, March 11th? And then multiple students could have that birthday, that in which case does not represent a function. Number nine, Mai wants to graph the solution of this inequality on a number line. So she replaces the greater than symbol with an equal sign, solves the equation, and gets x equals negative five as the solution to that. So which of these is the solution to the inequality? So we know um, that it's just a greater than symbol, so it's going to be an open circle. And we see that all of these have open circles on them. And then we know that that open circle is going to be at negative 5. So C and D are out because those are at positive 5. Then we need to decide which way the shading goes. And you can have multiple different ways of doing this. Um, but we can just take a value and plug it into here and see if it's part of the solution set. I like to choose 0 because then it just cancels out the variable. So when you do five times zero, so if I plug in zero here, this is just gonna be zero. Two times zero is just gonna be zero. So when I plug in zero, I get that negative four is greater than 19. And you decide if that's true or false. Well, this is true. Negative four is greater than negative 19. That means that zero is part of the solution set, meaning zero should be shaded. Okay, and we see in A that zero is shaded, in B it is not. So A is the solution set to that inequality.